Lately I've been doing a number of battery capacity tests by discharging them on some of these various handheld radios, uh, the TYTs, the Anytones, even did a Motorola battery pack and uh, a lot of the test results have come out interesting. They're pretty much as anticipated. The one surprise was probably the uh, cheapest Chinese radio, the uh, Xianjing came in about the best and beating most of the other ones out which was quite a surprise. <clears throat> However today I want to turn my attention to the next item. This is a portable repeater build that uh, we've been working on for a search and rescue group and what it does is it has an external battery that can be connected through the back that's also being charged by a solar panel and here's the connector and it plugs into the back of the case there. I can toggle between the external battery and an internal battery. The internal battery is this one and it's a smart battery. It's in order to save weight over a big heavy motorcycle battery such as this one we went with this that is much much lighter because this repeater has to be carried out by first responders and deployed quickly in the field. So we went with this smart battery. <clears throat> the first one that I tried and the only one I've tried so far is this lithium iron it's a uh, LIFEPO so lithium iron phosphate and uh, the nominal capacity of those for each cell is 3.2 volts and I think the um, maximum voltage for charging it I think is 3.6. So these are a four cell battery and this one's rated at 7 amp hours and it's 12 volts. So I wanted to try a discharge on this and uh, I should mention this has been through about a dozen uh, discharge cycle so far in the testing of this repeater. So how the repeater works is it's a dual band repeater and um, when it's active it'll be using on say uh, if you're using a 5590 duty cycle you'll go through perhaps 2 amps. I think our what we measured was 2.1 amps per day and um, that is measured via our gauges here that you can see. Uh, the one on the right measures the cumulative totals of how many amps is going through the voltage and the watt hours. And the, the voltmeter on the side is just showing volts, which probably is hard for you to read right now. There we go. So this toggle switch toggles between the internal battery and the external battery. So on the left, the, because there's no external battery connected, it uh, doesn't do anything. If I had this battery hooked up, then we would be getting the readings from this battery. And uh, But what we're looking at now is we're just going to be looking at the LIFEPO uh, discharge curves which uh, are different than lithium cobalt. And so what we've done is here's the charger. It's an Optimate design for this type of cell chemistry. And um, it puts out uh, 800 milliamp charge, which is what I wanted for a smaller battery like this. This has been charging overnight and uh, it's showing a full charge now. I wanted to have the battery fully topped up because again if you go by looking at this data you will see that in order to have a hundred percent state of charge uh, you're going to need to have your voltage up around 3.6 and uh, this battery is rated for 100% state of charge from the manufacturer or seller at between 13.3 <clears throat> to 13.4 volts. So, and state of charge, uh, if you uh, 
are unfamiliar with that term, it's it's knowing the amount of energy that's left in a battery compared with the energy it had when it was full. So it gives you an indication of how much longer a battery will continue to perform before it needs recharging. So it's a measure of the short term capability of the battery. Uh, use an analogy of a fuel tank in a car. The state of the charge estimation is basically often called the gas gauge or fuel gauge function for this battery. So we've got 100% state of charge in this which I am basing upon the fact that we're showing 13.47 volts right now and again the rating for this battery is 100% state of charge at 13.4 from 13.3 to 13.4 so now I'm going to start a discharge test using this item here and um, we're going to see how far we get we're hoping to get as close as possible to the 7 amp hour rating of this battery which was uh, I believe the seller on this battery was a company in Markham Ontario called TotalBattery.com So what I've done here with our tester is I've set our test parameters to a low voltage cutoff at 11 uh, because I found that the battery uh, shuts off at around 11.1 .1 for low voltage. That's the BMS system that shuts it off, the battery management system. And we're going to run a discharge at 500 milliamps or half an amp on that. You'll see that the charger's still turned on and I still have my windows on so I'm gonna shut those off and I am going to disconnect the charger which is this connection here so now I've got nothing else adding current to the circuit and I've got nothing else drawing it other than our tester and with that then I am going to commence the testing on the battery. You'll see it starts out at 13.39 when it's loading the battery which is what we want to see in order to confirm that we're going to get our 100% SOC. <clears throat> and now it's showing us um, the, so that's the voltage on the top, then the LED goes to amp hours that are accumulative and then watt hours now. So, volts, amp hours, watt hours, and that's how that sequence works. Now we're going to have to let this run, and um, we're going to be running into the evening by the time this test is finished, if uh, all goes well. Well, about nine and a half hours into the test, we've had a low voltage timeout at 4.836 amps or 4800 milliamps the voltage has recovered to 12.97 volts and it's 62.75 watt hours we got out of that. Just writing that down. I'm just going to quickly start that up again and see where the voltage times out. It shouldn't take very long for that to happen. No, voltage uh, as soon as it's loaded. So I'm going to turn. In fact, it won't. Um, It won't turn on the um, the repeater base. So then I'm going to just put a multimeter on there and see what we get on a multimeter. Uh, 
uh, we're showing 8.76 know if you can see that but that would be why 8.76 8.73 is where we're at on the battery now so that is 69% of capacity after a number of discharge cycles when the SOC even at 100% um, you would actually get 80 out of the battery so my hope was to get um, a yield of 80 at least out of the battery not 69 um, but even better anything closer to the rated would have been um, a little more encouraging so that's the smart battery 7 amp hour I'll contact uh, the seller at What are they now? Global? It'll put it in the notes. Um, anyway, I'll contact the seller and see what um, they may suggest about that. And I'll update that status uh, in the notes as well. Okay, thanks for watching. So now it's the next day and I've run the charger overnight to bring the battery back up subsequent to the test we did and uh, it's worth mentioning something about the charger because I did contact the seller totalbattery.com in Canada and uh, they seem to have some concerns about this charger when I bought the smart battery from them they did offer me a charger that put out 4.3 amps for over $200 and because this is a 7 amp hour battery that charger seemed a little more than what I really wanted so I didn't buy a charger from them I bought this dedicated lithium ion phosphate charger from Amazon for I believe it was around $65 something like that so um, what the concern is is that the vendor has expressed or the seller which is total battery is the charger uh, doesn't charge they said it only charges to 13.2 which means then you're only at 75% uh, state of charge or SOC however I found that not to be the case and I'll demonstrate that here presently the charger charges the battery to 13.4 which is 100% state of charge um, so I'm not sure the seller said I should be using a charger that produces 14.4 volts but I'm not sure why that is and I asked that but uh, it didn't get addressed in the subsequent emails um, to my mind if this battery is at 100% SOC then I should expect um, at least 80 percent if not more of the battery capacity and even after a dozen cycles I'm getting 69 percent out of it uh, I have asked the seller about a replacement warranty and that's not forthcoming so um, I guess it does beg the question uh, when you buy something in North America you are expecting some level of service beyond when you buy something out of China for half the price it would appear that maybe not always buying in North America is the best bet maybe you are better off underwriting your own liabilities for your items and um, you could probably buy two of them out of China for the price of one in North America so having uh, expressed that thought now we will just go over and look at uh, and confirm to see if what I expect is true and that would be how, how far we've brought up the charge 
So what I'm going to do now is switch this on and see where we're at. Hopefully you can see that. We're looking at 13.4 on both gauges here. So this charger does appear to be bringing it up. When it is in the active charge state, I see it is putting out a charge voltage of between 13.6 and 13.7. And now that it's come into this stage where it says that it's fully charged, it's the battery's resting at 13.4. Thank you.